In the last episode, we leave our motorcycle at a sketchy Italian port to be shipped home. Do you have any last words as we, you say goodbye to your bike? It was a pain in the ass. I am not confident this is ever going to reach America. In this episode, we wrap up our season by crossing the Atlantic Ocean as crew members on sailing yacht Tillingham. just arrived in Lemington Marina. Right. <laughs> we are about to board the yacht that we're going across the Atlantic on. So we're about to see our new home for the next month. I think it's going to be a little bit bigger than Paradox. Yeah, a little bit. There she is. This is the single nicest yacht I have ever seen in my entire life. We're gonna cross the Atlantic and we're gonna cross it in this stunningly beautiful boat that we could never, we should never be allowed to be on a boat this nice. So how did we come to be invited to sail on this vessel? Well, it all started the previous year when we met Andrew, the captain, and his wife Arwen, the mate, in the Caribbean. As we started to think about how we could hitch a ride on a sailboat home to America, we started thinking through all the people that we knew that would potentially be sailing boats back from the Mediterranean or Europe. We reached out to Andrew and Arwen and asked if they needed extra crew for their ride back from England to the Caribbean. And as it turned out, they had one crew, Dan, already signed up for the trip, but they had open spots if we wanted to join. A week or two later, we were in England, in Lymington, on the boat. But before we could go, there was a number of boat projects that we had to check off the list. Ah. Our first project was to elongate the foil, covering the Solent stay, in order to accommodate the new sails we were about to receive. This project involved first removing the stay from the mast and the chain plate. Getting the stay down to the dock. Removing the furling unit and bottom section of the foil, attaching a new section of foil and finally reinstalling it back in the boat. Plus you know I'm gonna say something to jinx us, right? Yeah, don't, yeah, maybe it's don't sneak. It's going great. I mean, we're like pretty much there. Just whack this thing back up. Happy days. <laughs> God, it's never gone that easy. Never gone that easy. Cheers. What a day. What a day. No one was crushed by a thousand pounds of throwing <laughs> yet. Pure fury. I'm up here at the top of the mast on Tillyman. I just installed this Wi-Fi receiver and uh, wind vane. I'm up at least a hundred feet. I can see the tops of other masts on boats that were larger than uh, Paradox. So up here, pretty high. It's a little nerve wracking, but but pretty, pretty awesome. Oh, I'm a little shaky, because that's why I'm going to put this camera back around my neck so I don't drop it. Once the boat was prepped, we were ready to install the new sails that the owner had commissioned. Although we did get to go for a test ride, these sails would sadly not be what we would be using on our delivery as they were being saved for charter guests. But for the brief time we sailed on these new ones, well, they were pretty crisp and very spectacular. 
Before we could leave, there was one final project. During our pre-departure mass check, we noticed that one of the spreaders was coming loose. So to make sure that the rig was going to be up to the job, we had to have it removed and inspected before we could leave. it's absolutely freezing here in England so that means it's time to go to the Caribbean the crew is feverishly downloading <laughs> <laughs> everything they can Dan stop stealing my Wi-Fi I am on my own network <laughs> ready for this I've already got all the books I need we got our watch schedule and hopefully in a few days we will be in the Canaries and a little bit warmer Few days is optimistic. Yeah, few could be five, <laughs> seven, ten. bit different than sailing in bathing suits, eh? Flying along, we've been averaging about nine knots since we left the channel. We're kind of almost past the southwest tip of Cornwall, the end of Biscay by midday, so feel good. Day two morning shift report. I'm tired. Rolled all last night, and in our bed, that means uh, we don't really sleep. It's a gray morning, it's about 7.30. Hard to tell if the sun's up. Wind is down a little bit, waves are up. And, oh, it looks like a winter sky. How you doing, babe? Oh, good morning. It is morning number four. Coincidentally, I think it's also shower day. Um, it's time for this girl and the crew to get clean. Let's take a look at what we've done so far because it's pretty cool. We are currently going 8.3 knots. Our distance to the Caribbean, we still have 3,600 to go. So here's where we started in England. This here. is the English Channel. And then here is the dreaded, the dreaded Bay of Biscay. The reason that this is such a potentially very dangerous body of water is because it's very deep, but it shelves up very quickly around the edges. So you can get just really unpredictable waves, really gnarly sea states. Um, it can be very unpleasant if you've got the wrong weather but it's been pretty good for us so far. As soon as we were out of the Bay of Biscay, we got an alert from our weather router that we were heading into two back-to-back -back low pressure systems and that they strongly 
advised us to seek shelter in Portugal until the weather had blown through. So after a short debate with the crew and weighing our options, we altered course to Portugal, just as the wind clocked around. As evidenced by previous sailing trips, sailing downwind is really fun, sailing upwind really sucks. Across Biscay we had 25 knots every day and even as much as 35 knots but it was always behind the beam and it was awesome, it was fun. Uh, we were just going fast and yeah you could like practically sip a martini while, while doing that but once the wind clocked around and it was only blowing 20 or 25 last night miserable. Land ho! Let's go check out Portugal. On land, first time in five days, still on a dock, so I can't tell yet if I'm land sick. Unexpected step one, successful. We spent the next four days in Kashkaish, a fishing village near Lisbon. And while it was a chance for the crew to get out, stretch our legs, and enjoy some really, really good food, highlight was being able to purchase an entire leg of prosciutto for just 50 euros. Hey Aram, what do you think of this hanging ham in your boat? It's great. I love it. <laughs> this is what happens when people go to the grocery store without you? Oh yeah. Actually, I'm surprised he didn't bring three back. <laughs> You recording this? Of course I'm recording this! <laughs> so we're trying to uh, try out the whole self-defense tactic with a ham. Yeah, we can't carry guns on the boat because of international laws, so we make do with the weapons at hand, which right. in this case is a 16-pound ham. Also, due to, uh, you know, Armin's not always so keen on hanging big hams, so we had to find multiple justifications, so there was like, you know, survival ham, yeah. and we're going to try out the self-defense ham. Okay. Where do you want it? Just in the shoulder blades, I guess, but you know, don't get me with the bone. <laughs> okay. Turn a little bit more. All right, there we go. <laughs> Come on, give it to me. Effective. More so, it's not the pain, it's the shock of being hit with a giant ham. I don't so know greasy do. afterwards. <laughs> In the next episode, we continue our journey across the Atlantic, leaving Portugal and heading downwind to get to Martinique.